Yeah, so f flying, that's a common difficulty. Um, I, I guess that there's no specific guidance about flying aside from, uh, I guess it depends what the cause of the stroke may be, what persistent deficit there might be, but let's focus on TIA, I guess. So if you've had one of these transient events, one would typically advise well, firstly, that you let your insurance company know. I think that would be the first thing to do. Two, to ensure that you've been seen by someone and that you started on the right treatment. And three, I would generally say, wait a, two weeks. And if you look at the Stroke Association website, that's typically what they would say. But if it's been a transient event, you've seen someone, you've had the discussion, and you've been started on the right treatment, you're well hydrated, you're moving around, it's not a long flight, I would have thought it would be absolutely fine as long as you've got agreement from your insurance company to grow pretty soon. And certainly I've had that discussion with patients and they've flown within that time absolutely fine. There are certain patients that might have an increased risk. For example, there is an increasingly known about condition called a PFO, patent foramen ovale, which is a hole in the heart. It's actually incredibly common. 25% of the patient's population have it. In certain patients, it can be associated with a clot going from the veins, so the vein of this deep vein thrombosis or the vein side of your circulation, to the arteries, which is where a stroke occurs. And in those patients, there might be a slight increase with flying early. But by far and away, the majority of the time, as long as you've been seen by someone, you've been started on the appropriate treatment, you've told your insurance company, you're well hydrated, you're moving around, it should be fine but the guidelines would typically say wait around two weeks.